Hello everyone, this is Lisa from Happy to Hook Creations. Today is Tuesday, it's the 14th of May, and I hope you are all doing well. I am in the living room uh, probably the next couple of days. Excuse me, let me take a sip of the coffee. Always get a notification the minute I turn on the video. <laughs> the very minute, it's okay though. All right. So this video is going to be my mystery yarn challenge. Yeah, my throat's been a little weird. That was kind of sounded funny, but <clears throat> the weather has been crazy. I've got the windows open, but it's been raining and then hot. And today the high is only going to be 67. Yesterday it was like 82. I, I don't know. It's weird. But <laughs> so that's what's up if you hear this voice. Uh, that That's kind of like not no. See, it did it again. So anyway... <laughs> This video, I'm going to have several. I'm going to try to do them like one today, one Wednesday, one Thursday, and then I'll frog it, finish it Friday. So today's video is going to be the Mystery Yarn Challenge. It is located, located? I guess it's located in my house. Uh, that was weird. Um, it's hosted. That's the word I was looking for. It's hosted by Lori of the Armchair Chef. She's been doing this. This is our second year. It's so much fun, and if you're interested and she has space, you definitely need to reach out to Lori. Her link will be in the description box below. If today, which is May 14th, by the way, is your birthday, happy birthday to you. If today is your anniversary, happy anniversary to you both, and congratulations on making it another year. I hope you guys have a great day. It's still early here. Um, I hope wherever you are, you guys are going to be with friends and family that you love and care for and they feel the same for you. Hope you have some great food because uh, that's important. And <laughs> I hope whatever you're doing, the weather holds out for you. So, okay. So this is the items that I finished with what I received in the mail. And for the life of me, I cannot remember. I want to say Bonnie, but I'm not sure if that's right. Jude, you know what? You know who you are. You sent me some really great yarn and it was great because everyone was like, what in the world are you going to make with those colors? So, she, so she sent me two colors of yarn. One color, I absolutely have no idea what it is. It was an ice yarns. It was a chunky cake. The other one was tender touch hobby, hobby lobby yarn, their yarn B. It was clearance. So it's probably discontinued, but it was, um, in the colorway suede. So yeah, <clears throat> so I made one, two, three, four items. I made four items with what I was given. Oh, there's a fifth one, but I don't know where it is. Oh, Jordan took it. Okay, so the fifth one is um, a knot bag that I made. And if I can contact Amanda, and have Jordan or, or Jordan and have him take a picture of it. I'll insert it, but if not, I'll show it to you on Facebook or something. Um, before we get into the mystery yarn challenge finished objects, and you might have already seen the video because Lori gives you a deadline. So this is it, it is not for May, even though it's May. This is the mystery yarn challenge finished objects for April. So, um, the May one has already started. I've got my tracking number. I haven't been to my post office, but I've mailed off my stuff to my pairing partner, um, for May. So May can, goes through, I think we have until like June something, 11th or 12th to get our item finished. And since the 12th was mother's day and I had so much going on, I was like, Oh my gosh, I like totally forgot, but I sent her pictures of everything. I did try to get a video together which is leading up to why I'm in the living room. So I did try to do a video on Sunday um, and I just could not get comfortable. My foot was throbbing and I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. So um, I took still pictures from that video and sent them to Lori. And <laughs> I looked out at my foot because you know, you don't really, I don't know, I don't. I don't really think about that. Sometimes, you know, if you stub your toe or whatever, you're just thinking it's not a big deal, it'll go away. Well, it was just like really throbbing. I'm like, what the heck's going on? Well, it was really swollen. My ankle was swollen. I had cut the top of my foot. So I went in my pantry. 
I let the kids put the food up. And I, when I went to move something, it was right on the edge. And so the can fell. There was a can that fell on my toe or on my foot, my toe. No big deal. But when I went to grab it, you know, like I knew it was falling. My nail scratched the top of my foot. This happened like last week. It's not, I mean, I didn't think anything of it. So then, then Sunday, after everyone was gone, I'm like, great, I can get this video done. It was throbbing and I looked at it and the scratch did not look so good and it was swollen. So I thought, ugh, all right. I took a picture of it. I sent it in an email to my doctor. I knew she wasn't gonna look at it till Monday. So Monday she says, I need you to come in because we gotta do an x-ray. And I'm like, uh, okay, just to make sure it wasn't broken. And yeah, you could, a can can break the top of your foot. It was a can of like green beans or something. There's no, there's no breakage or anything. Um, but it's infected. It got infected. I cannot even believe that. Oh, so crazy. So if you're just now joining me and you don't know, or if you forgot, I do have type two diabetes. It has been in control since I've had it. Um, because as soon as I found out, I decided to make some life choices. I am no, nowhere near where I need to be. But when I first found out that I had diabetes, diabetes, I was over 300 pounds. Um, I weighed at the time 320 pounds. So I am about 70 some, 77 I think at last count, 77 pounds lighter. It has definitely made a difference and it has kept my numbers where they need to be. So I'm off of a lot of medication. I don't take insulin shots or anything like that. I take two metformin a day and try to eat better. <laughs> okay, try to exercise by walking. I've got two really bad knees. Um, it, the, the knee situation is not because of my weight. I have degenerative arthritis in both knees. So one has already been replaced and the right one will be replaced soon. So with that being said, <laughs> um, I've never really had a problem with, um, you know, having infections or anything because I've always taken precautions about stuff like that. Well, when I scratched it with my nail, I didn't even think about it, you guys. Um, and you know, it, I don't know. I just feel like, wh why wouldn't you think about it? It didn't even bother me. I scratched it. I scratched the top of my foot. I'm like, oh, you know, that hurt. Put some antiseptic on it, not a big, and then just went on with my day, right? So a week later, Sunday, I'm looking down at my leg. I'm seeing how swollen it is. Send it to the doctor. Go to the doctor on Monday. She says, yep, it's infected. Long story, I know but it, it had to be said. So I'm at the couch because I can't elevate my foot in the craft room and it's on the ottoman right now on a pillow. So it has to be elevated. Um, I'm keeping it elevated. I've got, I'm on antibiotics and I'll be back at work probably Wednesday. So she just gave me a couple of days off just long enough for the antibiotics to work, to work its way through. And now, now that I know that there's something wrong, the stupid thing's been aggravating me and I can't get comfortable. <laughs> so I took, um, I took some extra strength sleepy or nighttime Tylenol and the antibiotics that I'm taking. And then, um, I lay down and it was, I, I, I know I said about 14 hours, but I probably slept for 10, at least 10 hours. I know I woke up early in the morning, about 326. I have been up ever since. I've been up ever since because I don't normally sleep. I don't take naps. I mean, <clears throat> I would love to take, I used to take naps all the time. And then I lost weight and became a little bit more active by walking. So I averaged 10,000 steps a day. That's my goal. If I get my 10,000 steps in, um, I'm, you know, I'm good. And I didn't really, I wasn't really, um, uh, really conscious about getting my steps in until my sister-in-law, slash bestie Lori, uh, she is she is just such a stickler about getting her steps in. And I love that about her because when I'm with her, when I spend time with her and we see each other as often as we can, she lives in Texas. She's married to my brother, uh, Tracy. But when she comes here or when we go to visit them, she looks at her watch and she's like, oh, okay. Uh, and, and she gets on her phone and she starts walking around the perimeter of her house if the weather's bad or if she knows she's got company and she will not stop until she hits 10,000. Um, kudos to her because I never did that. I was like, eh, missed it today. 
no <laughs> i don't want to miss it so um yeah so i did a lot of, i do a lot of walking when i'm not in and out of my car traveling and i think that's probably what agitated my leg a little bit uh and i also wear like shoes without socks i don't know why they asked me that question but i'm like yeah no i don't i don't wear socks i don't so it was rubbing against the top so here's my foot does the um the thing was like right here it fell and i went and i scratched it and it's just maybe like a half an inch but it was rubbing the top part against the top part of my shoe which was aggravating it so every time it was trying to heal and i would put my foot in the shoe it would reopen it um and it probably just got dirty shoes get dirty i don't know you know and so now we're fixing it <laughs> But the next couple of days, if I do a video, you're going to see me in here because it's pretty cramped corners uh, uh, or quarters, not corners. It's pretty crammed in my craft room right now because I do have things still kind of out. I'm I'm organizing my yarn a little bit now that I've sold a bunch and now I'm just trying to get my colors back where they need to be. So I've got things kind of spread out and I'm not about to let anything else fall on this foot or hurt it any more than it already is. So uh, living room bound. Now, with that being said, I know it's been like 11 minutes. So, um, if I don't put a disclaimer in the front <laughs> and you had to watch all of this and listen to me, I'm sorry, but not sorry. Cause you know, um, uh, I figured somebody would want to know. I don't know who, but someone what's well, really pouring out there now. And I'm hungry. So <clears throat> we're going to do this video and I'm going to show you what I made. Lori from the Armchair Chef, her link will be in the description box below. And again, Ice Yarns, there is absolutely no color. I looked, there was no color on there. It just said Ice Yarn Sale Clearance Yarn, Clearance Cake or Sale Cake. So, all right. And I'll, I'll really try to put, well, that's my own. This one is a paid for pattern. I'm looking so I know. So the first one, <clears throat> excuse me. You guys know how how obsessive I get with patterns. I've always been this way. This is nothing new to you. <laughs> so I've been making some bandana cows. So Crochet by Gigi, it's her, her tutorial. It's on YouTube, and I will link it in the description box below. She makes hers using a four-weight yarn, and she does like several rows that go up that you can like maybe cover your nose with or your mouth or whatever and then you can fold it down and to make it a collar super super cute and i've made a, a bunch like that especially the first set um that i'm the first one or two that i made but she has a back and front post um design for that collar part well as you know if you've been watching my videos you know that i was gifted a bunch of chunky yarn most of it is definitely loops and threads, charisma. There's a few Bernat. Um, yeah, there's a few Bernat softy chunky yarns in there, but I'm pretty sure most of it's loops and threads. So that's what I decided to do. I thought um, two, two things I wanted to make. Lovies, because I have a, a huge bag of plushies that I got to make lovies for. So I'm just going to make them. I'm not even going to, and, and I'm just going to hope that it's going to go with something that I've got in there. Because the bag is huge, you guys, I'm not kidding. It's big. It's like as big as my ottoman. Well, you don't see my ottoman. So anyway, it's a really big bag that I got, and it's stuffed. I it's There's probably over 100 plushies in there because I've been gifted plushies. I buy them when they're on sale. And, the you know, I had some from last year that I found when I was reorganizing my craft room. So they're all in there. So I figured I would do some lovey blankets and then some hats i'll make a few hats and then but mostly bandana cows and loveys because i really got to get that lovey situation under control <laughs> it's getting crazy so this is the first item that i made this is my first finished item for my mystery yarn challenge for april now when you do it if you've participated you already know this but if you haven't and you reach out to lori <clears throat> excuse me i don't know this voice and you reach out to Lori, she, like, I, I received two colors. If I had received four, all four colors would be in this bandana or whatever item I decide to make. 
because Lori likes for you to use at least or make at least one item with all the colors that you were gifted. And then, you know, from the rest, if you want to make more items, you can. Or I could just make one item. That's what's so great. You're not pressured into doing more than either what you're capable of doing because of your schedule or whatever. You're not like, and you've got the whole month. I mean, she gives you like 30, a little more than 30 months to get it, or 30 months, 30 days to get it done. Um, so, and I've got a really busy schedule, but you know, some, like, like I've stated before, sometimes with my job, when I'm waiting on a client, I'll take something in the car with me to do. And sometimes it's a mystery yarn challenge. So <clears throat> this is the yarn I was talking about. It really reminded me of like, um, I don't know. I kept, I think I said a tiger. That's, it, that's kind of what it looked like, but I don't mind these colors together. Someone is already interested and when I showed them this, they're like, um, that's really cute. So this kind of looks like um, the colorway is suede. And again, I'm pretty sure that this is discontinued now. But if you notice, it's the same thickness as the chunky yarn. And that's because I held three strands of it together. There is a tutorial. I couldn't tell you who it's from. But you just you, it's just like you make an S shape with your yarn. And then you cinch it together. And then... The yarn that the starting part, that's where you put your um, your knot to get started on. And then you just stick your fingers in between two of the yarns and pull it every time you get close to the edge or the end, I guess. And that's how you make it if you want to make something super thick. That explanation probably didn't make sense to you. Uh, if I find it, the video, I'll link it because I watched it years and years ago. Uh, I had a lot of three weight yarn and even finger fingering yarn, which I do not like to use. I don't make socks. But, you know, when people gift me yarn, I, I want to take advantage of um, using the yarn and not just letting it sit there. This is a problem that I was having, which is why I was destashing. So I did the first one with, with fingering weight. And it kind of turned it into a four-weight yarn. So I was able to make a hat with it. But it's great when you have three or four-weight yarn because it turns it into chunky. And you can do things like this. So I liked it. And this does not look bad at all. I edged it. <clears throat> now I wanted to use the um, the collar part with this suede color. But I had already made one item with this yarn. And I was running out. So this is as far as I got with that right there. Um, yeah. But it, it turned out really cute. And again, the original pattern, the, ins the inspiration was Crochet by Gigi. Now, I've, I've done mine since then. Everyone knows, if, if you like granny squares, you know how to do the granny square, stitch. If you've made a um, a granny square or granny stitch, I keep wanting to say square, but if you've made a granny stitch shawl, this is how you, you just start it in the middle here, and then you add your increases on either end, and then it just keeps getting bigger from there. And I decided instead of doing front post, back post, when I have these, I'm just going to do half double crochet. And some of them I've probably made with the bag of yarn that I was receiving or that I got. I got two garbage bags of them. I believe I probably made 10 cowls by now. You'll probably see them on Friday's video. But I've made a bunch of cowls with them. And I believe I did seven rows. Some of those balls of yarn were a little bit smaller. So I might have made six rows of them but it looks really nice and this one i didn't like i said i ran out but i think i was i think there's two yeah there's two rows so it still looks good i'm not going to try it on but it looks really good guys so there's that one this is my first mystery yarn challenge finished object for april i gotta try to lay it down there okay second one oops is a hat that I've made several times. As soon as it came out, I just had to do it. Um, it is by Crochet by Claire, who was previously Bob Wilson 123. And it is a literally, you start making like a granny square. You can see it. And then you change the corners just enough. And then you make, it makes a hat. Now it looks pretty square, right? But watch what it does. It's like so cool. It's a hat. I mean, it's just really weird, right? I don't know. I don't know if I have that on right. Is that right? 
I mean, it looks like there's, I don't know. Anyway, hold on. Now I gotta see what that, why does that look like that? Oh, I don't know. It just looked kind of weird on camera. Oh yeah, I just messed up my hair, sorry. <laughs> anyway, it's a hat, guys. It's a hat, this is a hat I can wear outside when I'm at, on my deck outside or working on my plants in the front yard or on the side of the yard or front yard or side of the house. <clears throat> and this yarn, this tender touch, oh my gosh, you guys, it is the softest yarn. It is so soft. I don't know why I never, I don't think I've ever used it. It's my first time using Yarn Bee Tender Touch. That's what it's called, Tender Touch. I don't think I've ever bought it, but I like it. All right, so that's my second item that I made. My third item is just something I whipped up, but I really like it, and I, I'm trying to remember how the heck I did it. But I wanted to use up some of the yarn, and I thought, well, I'll just make a hat. So I did. I made a bucket hat. And then my daughter Abby says, Mom, you got to make the brim so that you can pull it up or put it up like I did when I made my Rasta hat. So <laughs> there, this is the hat, right? Okay. That might be the end. Hold on. Is this right? I end it. Yes. Let's, let's do it this way. Okay. So this is how my daughter and her friends are wearing it and my son. And my son uh, is 24. And he said, Mom, that's great. And I made him a Rasta hat when I'm not sure if I showed that to you guys or not. I personally, okay, so I, I like it like this. I think it looks darling. So you can wear it this way. And this is chunky yarn. I've, um, like I said, it's chunky. I didn't double up on it or anything. I just made it in half double crochets. And I did one row at the, when I got ready to do the brim, I have no idea how many rows, I'll, show, I'll tell you that in a minute. <clears throat> but when I did the first row of brim, or for the brim, I did it in the front loop only. Yes, I did it in the front loop only. And that was the increase row. So I did one half double crochet, and then in the second front post, or front loop, I did two half double crochets all the way around. And then I just did, I believe, two more rows, maybe three, two more rows in just a regular stitch, a regular hole, and that's how it turned out. I didn't have to do any other increases other than the first one, and I think it's darling. I like it a little over, I know a lot of people don't, but I like my, and maybe it's because I wear glasses, I don't know, but I like that it covers my glasses, I like that I have this brim right here so that if I'm out, I think I'm gonna make Lori one of these, my sister-in-law, because she also wears glasses and it's there's so much sun. Sun, it's not good for you anyway. You gotta be covered up. And she is always out with her grandbabies and I made them all hats as well. But it's time for a new one. Hmm. So yeah, not bad. So you can put it up like this. Well, wait, in the front. This is how, yeah, just like that, or either side. Look at that, kind of like this. I really like the way this part looks. It's really cute. I like it. I think Miss Kim um, from Classy Kim Crochet, she uh, she makes hats like this all the time. She makes some darling stuff. All right, so look at that. So this is why, look at how my hair goes sometimes. This is why Abby says, uh, she called me Corella DeVille one time because my hair is like still, the way I part it sometimes it's black and then it's white right here. Not intentional. It's just how it's coming out guys. So, okay. So here's the hat. So what I did, like I said, I did half double crochet. So let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <clears throat> Was this the front? Hold on. It's right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I did eight rows of half double crochets, right? And I just started it like, I think I put 10 half double crochets and then three rows of increases. And then when I got to the ninth row, I did the back loop. And if you look at it, you can kind of tell. Or I did the front loop only in that first row. 
first row of the brim, okay? And then one, two, let's see. Yep, one, two, three, four rows. So I did four rows for the brim. And the first one is one half double crochet and then two half double crochets for the increase to kind of make it flounce out. I think it did great. Look at that. So yeah, this is definitely my, this is my favorite. I'm going to keep this on for a second because I really like it. <laughs> I think I like get some of that yarn. Oops. I just, sorry. I had to move every once in a while. I got to shift it because then shift my leg because underneath it, it kind of bothers me. <clears throat> but I'm going back to work on Wednesday, a couple of days. All right. So the last thing I made, this is a paid for pattern, guys. I will have it linked in the description box below, but this is by Plushy Co. And no, I didn't give him a face yet, but I made another squid, another squid. This is probably going to be my mascot for my desk at work, but I wanted to see what a squid would look like with this chunky yarn. And I made, I made a few with blanket yarn, so I knew he was going to come out okay. And he is absolutely adorable. But I am going to put a mouth on. I did have some black yarn here. I'm the only one home today, by the way. Jack is at work and Abby's at school. And my grandbabies are not visiting me today. So I will get what I need later. I'm usually, I'm only getting up um, to go to the bathroom or get me something to eat. And I only had snacks here. I had my, my adamame beans. But I really, really want an egg and... Um, maybe a piece of sausage or something. So I'll go make that. But yeah, so I made this, I made this, and I made this. You guys know that that thing on, um, I don't know. I made this, and I made this, and I made this too, woohoo. <laughs> oh, and this, can't forget, hold on. And this, I really like this yarn. So I do gotta say, guys, I had never used I used, I've used ice yarns before, but I have never used an ice yarn chunky cake, and I had never used Hobby Lobby's Tender Touch yarn. So, so this is it for my yarn video for yarn, um, Mystery Yarn Challenge. That just felt, it's gonna have to stay down there. For <laughs> April. And again, a special thanks to Lori of the Armchair Chef because she's wonderful. It's a lot to undertake, and she also works. So if you do not know who she is, if you have not subscribed to her channel, hop on over there, click on that link I'm going to put in the description box below and show her some love. And you can even say in the comments that Lisa sent you over there. But definitely check her out. She's sweet, and her little doggies are adorable too. So um, yeah, so those are the four items that I made. I cannot wait to show you the unboxing for May when I go. I think Abby... Um, or Amanda, one of them. It's so weird to say Abby because she's only had her driver's license since March. I just feel like, and I, I asked her the other day, I'm like, can you go to the post office for me? Do you know how to, do you remember how to get there? And she's like, well, I guess if I have to, she doesn't like going places, school and work and her best friend's house. That's pretty much it. You guys and her brothers, she's gone. She goes to her brother's or Amanda's house, her sister's, but <clears throat> She doesn't like really strain too far. And I told her, just put it in your GPS, it'll be fine. So I, I might send her to the post office today and have her check. Well, that was loud. And see if it's there yet, because I'd love to get started on some stuff. <clears throat> so I'm hoping I can go back to work Wednesday. Um, I'm supposed to take a picture of it and send it an email so that the doctor can compare from when I first went to see her um, yesterday with Wednesday morning. So. I might take Wednesday morning off and just like, or, or just work from home instead of traveling because I usually travel Tuesday and Wednesday. I know Thursday is going to have to be a big travel day for me because I got to get a lot of stuff done and um, see some clients. But <clears throat> if the doctor says no, then they're going to have to wait. That's how that's working. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching this kind of goofy channel or uh, video. The channel's goofy too. But I love that I'm goofy. So, I'm going to get off here so that I can maybe make another video and post it either today or tomorrow. I don't know. And I have on my yarn. You can't even see it. Can you see it? My my uh, my yarn allergy shirt. Yarn ologist. 
I can't even talk. But you know, you see what that says. And it's sparkly. It's like this sparkly stuff. So I got this from Hobby Lobby um, last year when they had their clearance. It was like $4. And I was moving things around again in the craft room. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, have, a, I have yarn shirts in there? Yes, I did. That's what happens when you don't look. And I didn't look. So I found a shirt. I'm wearing it. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to get off here. I'll see you when I see you. Please go over and show Lori some love if you haven't already. And yeah, you're going to see me in the living room for the next couple of videos, guys. Um, until I no longer have to elevate this foot of mine. But thanks again for watching. Thanks for your support. And a few of you have reached out on Facebook. But I'm yeah, I'm fine. Just a scratch. <clears throat> We're getting it taken care of. A little swollen. It'll be good as new in a couple of days. <laughs> thanks so much for watching and listening. So this video is... Mystery Yarn Challenge, and lots of chatting. <laughs> but I appreciate you for listening. Thanks so much. And I'll see you when I see you. Happy hooking, everyone. Bye for now.